Welcome, traders, to this week's instalment of these uh, live analysis sessions um, with me, Patrick Munley. Um, before we get going today, obviously, what we want to first of all uh, adhere to is um, the risk disclaimer. As we, uh, as we sure know by now, it's uh, it's incredibly important that we understand the risks involved in trading any financial instruments and. More importantly, um, from my perspective, the opinions I'm sharing today, firstly, don't constitute invest investment advice, and, uh, and secondly, they are not uh, related to tip mill. So um, for those who uh, are here for the first time, I'll just give you a quick uh, context as to who I am. I've been trading for 15 years. Um, I wasn't always involved in financial markets after I graduated. I, went into the world of consulting, and then I uh, left a city PLC and uh, got involved in a, a startup, a consulting startup, experienced some pretty rapid growth, and after four to five years, I cashed in my stake in that business, and um, I had a bunch of time on my hands and some chips to play with, and so I started to um, what I refer to as meddle or gamble with respect to the markets. I had a front row seat due to the nature of the work I was doing, um, in the startup uh, to witness the, the tech boom and bust, seeing people um, make and lose fortunes in the markets literally, quite literally overnight at times. Um, and so I started day trading the e-mini S&P and uh, the market was predominantly trending north and I caught some, some lucky early breaks and started to make some solid and then some quite significant gains and, uh, and all seemed rosy until, uh, as is often the case, my, uh, my big luck ran out and um, uh, things hit the skids, to say the least. I ended up uh, not just losing what I'd made, but uh, I actually took a, a six-figure hit um, as I started averaging down into, um, into losing positions. So it was at that stage I decided to, to step back from, from trading and try and uh, gain some perspective and understand whether or not I could actually make trading work as a commercial endeavor, as I've done in other, other business enterprises. And so I sought out a mentor, someone who demonstrated excellence in the field of trading, worked with him for 18 months, two years, uh, developed a uh, trading plan, business plan, uh, fully back tested, forward tested and came back into the markets uh, 2008 uh, with a, a solid uh, solid approach to markets. And really what I'd learned from working with a mentor is not just the technical skills I needed to, to, to operate consistently in the market, but most importantly, it was the mental skills. And they stood me in good stead and I navigated 2008, came out at the end of the year profitable and have been profitable on an annual basis since then. Um, the reason you can see performance from 2013 on the screen is that that's when I started my managed account service and um, it was initially family and friends who saw what I was doing and wanted to get in on the action and, uh, and it's grown organically since then. It's now a multi-million dollar portfolio that I manage and, um, and like I say, on an annual basis, I've, I've managed to, to be consistently profitable um, and that's because what I do is I, I'm not interested in the outcomes of individual trades or even small strings of trades. What I'm looking at is the next 100 trades. And um, I'm focused really, or my, my, my sole concern is, is process. You know, if I execute my trading plan um, from a process perspective uh, with excellence, then over a, a significant or, or over an extended series of outcomes, my edge will demonstrate itself and I'll. Uh, I should deliver positive returns. But that's not to say that I don't have strings of losing trades, losing months, multiple losing months, none of that. But you know, I'm not uh, I'm not bothered about about that. I accept loss as part of the the process in terms of moving towards the next next gain. I guess really what I focus on is the fact that when I lose, an average losing month is 2.4 percent, an average winning point is uh, month is 8.1 percent. Um, and so if you extrapolate that out, you know, I'm getting somewhere between two to three times my risk reward in terms of returns. So that's um, that's my core focus. Um, most of the, the trading I do is, is end of day stuff now. So I have a bunch of time on my hands, but, you know, I still want to be involved 
in markets. And so I have a couple of other projects. I obviously am the um, resident market expert at Ticknell. I provide a daily market outlook and a setup that I'm potentially looking at for the day ahead or within the next few sessions. You can sub subscribe uh, via the blog page there to receive those to your inbox. And then the uh, the other project that I'm heavily involved in is FX Career Swap. This is really a, a, a way of giving something back in terms of helping retail traders overcome what are a bunch of key challenges, um, primarily um, not just in terms of helping develop them from a, an education perspective, but um, working towards actually um, managing uh, meaningful capital. Because the reason most retail traders end up liquidating their accounts is that they're woefully undercapitalized. And so when it comes to, uh, once they've got a plan in place and they, they've got risk management, and they, they, you know, they know what they're doing finally, often um, for most retail traders, is the fact that they even if they adhere to their plan and ex, you know execute it with um, professional risk management standards, um, you know even a, a 30 to 50 percent annual gain, which is fantastic. Um, if you're trading a thousand pound account, that really doesn't move the needle in terms of uh, financial returns. So what tends to happen to retail traders is they they leverage up, they take on too much risk, they run into a small drawdown, but because they're over leveraged and overextended on the risk side. The drawdown basically wipes their account out, and so that's the, the really the, the merry-go-round that most retail traders find them up, find themselves on. They they experience um, that process over and over to the point at which they just get sick of it and uh, and go and do something else with their spare time. So what we're offering at um, FX Career Swap is we're saying we you know we believe in the education we're providing, we believe in our community and the support that it gives traders um, to to the point that we will actually fund you. Uh, for a meaningful sum of money that you can then grow over time on a project share. We've actually got a 14 day free trial service at the moment. I'll put a link into the chat if anyone is interested in, uh, in learning more about that, um, that service. And actually, this evening, I'm, uh, I'm hosting a webinar um, which will explain in more detail uh, the, the service and I'll link to that. In the chat, if you want to join me this evening at, uh, at 6 p.m., you are all welcome. So that gives you a flavour of where I'm coming from. Um, now let's move into thinking about the markets and where we're up to. So share this um, chart uh, last week, and uh, you know, want to always be cognizant of, of the seasonality that we tend to see in markets. Um, and as as we anticipated, the dollar is having a decent run. Maybe it's the uh, best month of the year on average, and we're seeing the dollar strength. I'm going to look at the dollar chart in a minute, and uh, some of these dollar men are some very interesting positions because um, the you know this dollar strength that we're witnessing um, in May tends to be the, uh, the, the you know it tends to put in a, a, a tradable high in terms of the dollar because we then see uh, a swoon in terms of the summer months for the dollar. Obviously, the other majors picking up a bit from. From losses seen in May. Uh, in terms of other seasonality that I'm, I'm also tracking uh, is the uh, S&P 500. We saw very strong April as we'd anticipated versus the, the historic uh, seasonal trend and May looks to, uh, we're looking at a bit of a wobble here at, uh, at the start of May or mid-May now um, and we could see that that persists throughout the month uh, before we see some gradual pickup in uh, in the S and P. So if we think about the S and P as the, the global barometer for risk, we want to be cognizant of what's what's moving that. Another um, another thing of interest or note that I would pay attention to. I, I posted this to the trading team at FX Chris this morning. Um, Sterling has uh, has taken a bit of a, a dive. A, a, well, I wouldn't say a dive, but a swoon here this morning. We've had Trump out on the wires uh, talking about King Dollar. Um, I guess he's at the stage now where you know he's he's in a position um, where obviously these economies are going to open up again, and um, we'll see how that plays out in terms of uh, the pandemic and the implications uh, for a re-emergence of infections. Um, but yeah, he's talking about King Dollar and um, and about the fact that uh, you know he would like to see negative interest rates, but he accepts that you know. At this stage, the dollar is king in terms of the global 
global scale. And so this is moving into um, election, you know, campaigning uh, rhetoric at the moment. So expecting to flip flop a bit, but we've seen a bit of a drop in um, sterling, and we note that um, in terms of FX options, in the last 24 hours, big increase in some downside. Uh, attention certainly to that 120 area and I'm going to look at that 120 area in a minute um, because we've got a deadline coming up uh, at the end of June with respect to um, with respect to the uh, Brexit talks again and the, the implications at this stage are that um, you know the UK once again are adopting a fairly uh, hard stance and uh, I don't appear to be to be up for much neg negotiation so the options market is starting to to look at downside potential and so what where we see these 120s basically what they are is that they're, they're downside um, structures which allow the purchaser of the option to take um to take you know to to take possession of that one 120 strike on the date so i mean if you know if you're going to if you're betting that prices are going to decline you've got a 120 um, downside strike and what, what that allows you to do, depending upon where price is um, heading into that period, you know, your profit is anywhere below that 120 area. So it's certainly something to, to keep an eye on. It's something I update the guys in our, uh, in, our, in our team chat on a daily basis, the options flow, it's uh, something to keep an eye on. We're also this VIX structure, the VIX, obviously the volatility index with respect to uh, the S&P 500. We see, we'd look to be tracking here where the kind of the model we saw in 2008, 2009, whereby we got a spike in the VIX, and then we got that secondary spike before we saw, um, as, as, as we traded into what ultimately became a low. So it's important to watch this, this VIX move, and certainly as we're seeing a pullback in terms of the S&P at the moment. Um, again, this is a similar thing looking for that secondary um, spike in terms of the VIX here uh, would suggest that we have a little bit of work to do maybe on the downside. Again, this is just the, the analogies with respect to uh, 07, 08 in terms of rallies and scope of rallies, 46 days, 24%. Obviously, we've seen a lot more than that um, most recently, but in terms of time and price, uh, something to, to keep in mind. Um, and this is the analogies. Uh, this is taken from Jeff Gundak, Double Line Capital. Um, you can see that in uh, 1929, for example, we uh, bear with me. 1929, you know, we got a significant pullback before rolling over, and the real uh, nightmare set in in terms of the economic decline. And if we listen to Fed Chair Powell last night, he certainly uh, was sounding the alarm with respect to the markets. We've had a bunch of high-profile investors out over the past couple of days, knows to be uh, Drucker Miller, thinking that uh, this market's got ahead of itself and that we probably have some more work to do on the downside. So um, again, it's just these are these are uh, market themes or dynamics that we want to, to be cognizant of as we're navigating through the charts. Um, finally, this, I've, I've shared this before, but you know, it's worthwhile revisiting this idea of uh, the dollar cycles and the potential that we're heading into uh, a major dollar peak here and certainly driven by the, the amount of liquidity um, that the Fed is, is putting into the market is, uh, is potentially going to drive that. And um, this is the, the Goldman Sachs monthly 16 year cycles in terms of the dollar index as well, which we've just completed. Um, so these are, again, these are just factors that I want, you know, that, that I keep, uh, keep in mind. This is the US dollar seasonality. Obviously we just looked at it through the heat map, but you know, we tend to see a peak into this this summer month and then a, a, a decline in the dollar. So um, those are factors that I certainly want to to be cognizant of as we now um, move into the charts. Firstly, we want to check in with this monthly uh, dollar index chart as as I you know I keep you I try to keep you aware of these higher time frames. We're at this major trend line. We've seen each month that we've you know during the month we've we've traded higher tested the trend line, tested the way above the trend line, but at the end of the month, um, consistently, or the last, you know, we, we closed the last two months below it. And if we get a third close this month below it, that would certainly be concerning to, uh, to dollar, bull, uh, dollar bull, sorry, bulls. Um, so keep an eye on this, this monthly chart. It's one that I, um, I, I certainly pay attention to. Now, in terms of the, the current environment, the current trading setup, well, we've got this. This is the, uh, the Dow Jones dollar index, which is an equally weighted dollar index versus the uh, euro 
uh, sterling, yen, and the Aussie uh, on an equal weight basis. And we can see here that we're just coming into some symmetry swing, swing resistance. When I refer to symmetry swings, I'm measuring prior swings in the decline and looking for those to act as resistance. We've got a cluster here at this 125.90 area, 125.60. We're just trading into there now. And I'm watching to see if, uh, if this is the area where we're gonna, things are going to get a bit sticky for the dollar. And uh, we're certainly over, overbought in terms of the momentum. And I'd also note that we're coming into some trend line resistance with respect to our psych indicator. So if we hold this trend line resistance, we get a bearish reversal in this area. And certainly, again, I'd be looking at uh, deploying dollar shorts. If we take the DXY, so this is the broader dollar index as versus um, six major pairs, it's quite heavily weighted in terms of Europe. Also includes things like the, the Swedish krona, which aren't particularly heavily traded. But um, again, we're trading at this trend line resistance. Now, we've broken it certainly and traded above, but we failed to close. So watching today, we're also trading at the monthly R1. We've, um, we're in the midpoint in terms of uh, the psych indicator, um, in terms of sentiment, but we are, in terms of momentum, getting into the oversold area. So I'm really paying attention today, and you'll see there are a bunch of these charts now that are at this key inflection point. If we get a break, uh, if we take out the trend line, on a closing basis, um, then what I'd be looking for, or we then start to have to pay attention to, um, to potential upside here, and the first port of call will be the equidistant swing, which would actually see the dollar up into this 101.60 area. Um, we've, I think we've probably got some further confidence here if we look at this equality move. So yeah, so if we if we close above this uh, this 140 area, 150 then it's 10, uh, 190 to 10116 will be the next area of interest in terms of the upside. And again, if we if we take out that zone, then we're up into the 161 extension of this structure, um, which would have us up at 102. And if we bring the fibs there, let's see where that comes in terms of, and that's the 78.6% retracement. So where we get this confluence of the 161 extension and the 78.6% retracement, Certainly pay attention to those areas because those are the levels that we often see um, reversals or um, new trends emerge. So if we trade up into there, get a sell signal, then there's still opportunity to, to see downside. You've got to bear in mind as well, we're trading with it. We're heading into the summer months and often the summer months in terms of Forex and most markets are defined by range. And so at this stage, we're still in a, in, you know, we're still in the range here. And even if we break up here, we're still within the March range, obviously the March range was very extended due to the nature of, of the, the pandemic and the crisis trading. So it is an extended range, but we are still just trading within ranges. We're not we're not really breaking out as such at this point. Obviously, if we do take out this 102, um, then as I've mentioned before, there is uh, there's certainly scope for an, an upside target here of 106 in the dollar. Um, less likely at this stage, but again, always want to be paying attention. Um, to where the you know where we can go in terms of market mapping and uh, realistic expectations with respect to prior price swings. So we're not just pulling levels out of the air. We're letting the prior moves within the chart give us ideas of where prices is, is likely to go. Um, another one that I'm watching at the moment is this Swissy. Again, you'll you'll note this theme in terms of triangles is is prevalent at the moment, but. This Swiss is trading back up into the resistance area. You can see the wicks we've seen here every time we've got up in, into this 97, late 97 area. So watching to see what happens as we test here. Um, we've also got, again, thinking in terms of um, these momentum uh, trend lines and um, I'm paying attention now as we get up into this area because this may, uh, may stall again here and then we've got another move back down to the, the support area. If we take it out, which would obviously imply that the dollar index takes out that um, its descent, its first trend line, then we've got the next area of interest at 98.50 in the Swissy and uh, certainly watching that. Dollar yen, um, played this from the from the long side earlier in the week with the reversal pattern as per our, our strategies. Um, now what I'm looking for is uh, this one second. What I anticipate now is that we hold um, symmetry swing support. We could drive higher here, 
Um, let's see, we've probably got a little internal equality move there as well. We have. So if we do if we do push higher here in terms of the dollar yen, um, 108. 30 to 108.50 is the area I'd be watching to, to set short positions. And ultimately, I'm looking for a test of this 104.60, which is the equality objective versus this structure. So this uh, this high, this reaction low and the reaction high. Um, whilst we trade below this 108.30, then that's the downside objective. From there, obviously, we could see a more meaningful um, correction ensue. Um, but if we do get down into there, then certainly want to pay attention to how the dollar yen trades there, because that could be a uh, a decision point for the market in terms of the next next phase for dolly n um Looney, obviously similar story trading in the triangle so i'm watching triangle resistance um coming up to the the over overbought area with respect to the um the momentum studies and so watching the loony as uh, as we trade here because i've still got a downside target on the loony um of this 136 area which is the quality so basically what we've done is we've had our first leg down we've corrected and now we're in this complex correction similar story in many charts that we look at today but you can, these are these are certainly you know very tradable and furtive patterns so um it's well worth paying attention to these trend lines and how price reacts at them uh, you can either do i'm you know most of my trading like i say is daily chart but you can also look on those intraday charts to try and tighten up your risk reward parameters um, so you can get down to the hourly the four hour charts and see when we hit these trend lines, how price responds. And if you get that bearish reversal or bullish reversal, depending upon um, where, we, where we're where we at, um, then, you know, there will be an opportunity in terms of, uh, in terms of this dollar CAD and a bunch of these that I'm looking at. Um, I haven't got anything there. The Euro, so this is the one I'm, I'm really paying attention to. We're testing that sending trend line. If we can find support here, and on the initial stab into this area, it looks like we're um, some bids are emerging in the market, but certainly a close back through the near term VWAP. So um, today it would be uh, above 108.23 would be would set up a bullish reversal and the potential then to trade up to test trend line resistance. Uh, certainly the first target would be this 109. We had a pop up there yesterday. Important to also understand, and I, I shared this. Um, in my daily market update, uh, daily market outlook, sorry, is that we're in a position at the moment where there's a significant options flow, $12 billion worth of options expire this week between 107.50 and 109. And that's kind of defining the range at the moment. But once they've gone, um, after you know the end of the week, uh, we could then, you know, we could have the potential to get up and test trend line resistance. And as I posted before, we have that, um, interim equality target at uh, 110.50 if we can get through that trend line but like I said always be cognizant as we head into these summer months of, of range trades and you can see the volatility bands are, are flattening out somewhat here so um, first of all the call will be a 109 if we can get a reversal today and then 109.70 um, on to 110.50 uh, now, another chart that I'm watching is the Euro Kiwi heading up, potentially about to test some symmetry swing uh, resistance here at this uh, 181 area. And, um, and if we do find and get a, a bearish reversal pattern here, then um, we could have an opportunity to do something on the short side, targeting a move down into this 78.6% uh, retracement of this uh, prior advance. And from there, we could see a, uh, a more meaningful move. But uh, watching this 181.40 area, again, bearish reversal patterns, depending upon how you, you, know, you choose to trade, you can look on the four hour, the hourly charts, see if we get a reaction there and get time at your risk reward. Sterling, so this is what I was, uh, this is the one I was talking about earlier. Whilst we're trading, we, we, have a, we have a trend line here. Whilst we're trading below that trend line, then, you know, we're kind of in a fairly well-defined um, channel, which will take us down into um, this equality target at um, at the 120 area. Sorry, the 161 extension and the 50% retracement at this 120 area. Now, if um, if we can, if Sterling can find its feet today and get a, a bullish reversal and close back above the VWAP at uh, 122.75, then there's the potential for another symmetry swing move here, and you can see. This will take us into a kind of 
uh, head and shoulders scenario, um, whereby we have Sturluson. You have uh, this as your shoulder here. You have a double head, and then um, and then we'd have our other shoulder over here. So watching today, because it could be it's certainly a, a, a tradable setup if we get that, uh, that support here at the 121.60 holds bullish reversal. Then there could be a long to trade back up into the 125 area before we uh, probably get that next leg lower to test this 120. And remember, certainly be cognizant of those downside options that are in play there. But uh, from that 120, that'll be a key decision point, I think, for Sterling. And it's from there that we can see the next leg higher. Um, certainly, we have open targets at the 78.6% um, tracements again, level always want to be aware of. Um, at that 128, so you know we could be getting up to 128, uh, depending upon. And again, we'd have to be looking, always want to be paying attention to the market dynamics in terms of the the narratives with respect to Brexit, uh, etc., and um, and paying attention to that. Uh, sterling yen is coming into its its support or decision point that I'd be paying close attention to 129.50, 129.70. If we can get some bullish reversal patterns here, I'd look for a symmetry swing. Um, for potentially then setting up that next leg lower to test into its 78.6% retracement area. So watching 129.50, uh, 129.80 as the potential reversal zone there. Aussie, seeing the pullback that um, that I talked about with, uh, with the trade team. Uh, so we're testing, looking now for a test of the quality objective at this 6360, 6330 area, whereby I'd still be then looking for a final leg higher to complete this, this sequence and test that 67, which is 78.6% retracement, and this equality target versus this structure here. So 6360, 6330, the key areas I'm going to be watching, bullish reversal patterns, set long positions for the 67 test. Uh, Aussie Yen, similar story. Correct, correction developing here, but we've got equality at the 67, uh, 67.70 area. If we get down there, I'm going to be watching bullish reversal patterns again for the same type of play to get this final thrust higher into um, this 78.6% retracement and the equality objective at 72 level. And then I think we can see a more meaningful correction ensue. Similar story in the Aussie key, uh, Aussie Swiss. We have uh, with the potential here for um, this equidistant swing to play out, and that would take us nicely into the 78.6% retracement. So again, watching for bullish reversal patterns. Monthly VWAC has gone bullish, so we can play a continuation trade from the central tendency here if we get a, a bullish reversal in the Aussie Swiss. Aussie Kiwi, I've been tracking this one for a while. It looks like it's about to complete its, uh, its impulse leg here. And so I'm watching uh, for a move into this uh, 108.50 area, and certainly there I'd be looking at the potential for short positions and um, looking for an equality move, the last leg down uh, prior to the, the cycle low. So I think we can easily anticipate that if we um, if we get these bearish reversal pattern in around 108.50, then um, certainly I think we can play for 104 on the downside um, in the coming months. So keeping that one on the radar. Kiwi is testing trend line support. The distance swing, key test here now. Note that we have, or we are breaking down here, this, uh, the bullish momentum uh, support it looks like it might be failing, so that could forewarn us that the trend line is gonna hold. But again, if we get bullish reversal here, we've got unfinished business to my mind up at uh, this 64, 30, 6480 area. Um, so we've just been consolidating within the range, and let's see if we can get uh, reversal patterns to, to target the uh, completion of this initial leg off the lows. Uh, similar story in the Kiwi Yen, a little bit more defined in terms of range. So I'll be looking for a test back down to the 63.10, 63.15 area, bullish reversal patterns, get long for the quality objective up at the 69.50. Um, 
else do I have? Let me make sure. So at the moment, um, I'm sure the, the only trade I've got on at the moment is the CAD yen, which I'm short. Um, it's risk free now. Um, and it looks like it's, we've got some Canadian data coming out later and um, we can expect some volatility. So we'll see uh, where we are after that data. But I'm, I'm looking at this stage to, for it to test the selling trendline support down to 75, then maybe another pop higher before we're going to move back down again. But bearish to CAD yen at the moment. This structure looks uh, corrective versus this decline. I'd be expecting new lows, monthly BWAP bearish. Again, you can see the contraction in terms of volatility bands, uh, making it uh, making it tricky uh, in the in the center, you know, the high volume node in terms of the triangle, the center of the triangle. So finally, I'm going to finish up with a couple of charts here. We've got the S&P 500 um, in the corrective pattern, like the Aussie. Uh, the Aussie and the the S&P have uh, been trading in tandem. So I'm looking for 27.58 to hold in um, in the futures here. So we get this move. Then, like the Aussie, uh, and like a bunch of these other charts, I'm looking for this last leg in this initial correction. We've got a bunch of um, equality objectives, 161 extensions, equidistant swing, 78.6% retracement. And I think once we get up here, then we should, we'll see some exhaustion in terms of this initial um, move off the lows. And again, I'd be looking for something like a 50% retracement, um, maybe into the summer as, uh, as we just grind out a correction here, um, and then we'll see how we're looking in terms of uh, you know the, the, the economies reopening, what what sort of data we're getting in terms of reinfections, etc. But anything in this 31, 40, 31, 60 area, bearish reversal patterns, intraday charts. You can also use again tighten up your risk reward, that, um, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to look to see if I can get an entry on the long side, first of all, at this 27.58 area um, in the coming sessions. And the last chart I'll leave you with is gold. i uh, share this as a chart, chart of the day today. I'm looking for one more push down into the support to complete a corrective structure here, A, B, C, D pattern. Um, and then I think we get the move higher. Pay attention as we test the equality objective versus this structure here, equidistant swing. Um, and we also have the 127 extension of this uh, this last leg down here. So um, watching how we trade, if we trade up into this 1766 area, because this could uh, this could cap things. Um, but if we get through there, then I'm looking for 1850 as the next upside objective. So um, watching it now, I think we get to you know, test this trend line and maybe get this one last uh, swing low as an opportunity to uh, to get in on the long side. So I've, uh, I've shown a bunch of charts there. I hope, uh, hope that's been useful for you. Does um, does anyone have any questions at this stage, guys? If you do, you can type them into the chat or a chart you want me to look at that I might not have covered, and um, I'm happy to cover that for you. Um, Dayan, uh, uh, that's uh, that's a topic um, uh, that would be a little a little bit too tricky to cover right now in terms of the time I've got left in, in this webinar. Um, if you want to drop me an email, I can send you information on how option expiries impact the FX market. Um, essentially, it's to do with hedging by the options providers. Um, so mainly the, the big banks that if if price is trading in and around the option strike. Um, then if, if, we, if we, they're trading through those levels, they have to hedge in the spot market to cover potential losses. And that's what, uh, that's what creates the kind of magnetism of these. Uh, you know, when I say options levels, I'm talking, you know, they, they need to be in excess of, well in excess of a billion dollars to, 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 be mag to prove magnetic in the market. This week, like I said, we've had $12 billion in euro um, optionality between 107.50 and 109. And you can see how the price at this point has been penned in um, by those options. So pay attention to the bigger strikes is, is my um, advice. Certainly, if we're trading into them on the upside, potentially as resistance, and on the downside, potentially as support. But again, be cognizant of the size. You need, it needs to be at least a billion plus. Any other questions? Euro C, yeah, I know it's a choppy market. Just one um, yeah, I mean, again, so you, you know, this is a bet on the Swiss National Bank, and um, and like I've said before, uh, they are, uh, you know, look at the chart in 2015 when they pulled the peg, 
and, um, and all hell broke loose. Um, technically, we're in a declining wedge, and um, you know you could expect upside from here. Um, but on the bit of you know how we're trading at the moment, um, the, the weight of or the balance of probabilities to the downside. And I did note um, a while back, and I shared this in the chat that um, there was some big optionality down at 103 in the Euro Swiss for this summer. So um, you know we could still see a further grind lower here. And uh, like I say, the Swiss National Bank are notorious at throwing in the towel. So I won't be relying on them. Any other questions? Um, Anthony, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, um, so in terms of looking at the lower time frame, so for example, if we, uh, I'll just quickly show you something. So this is the daily chart of this, you know, this this big daily trend line in terms of the euro. Now, what you can do to try and tighten up your risk reward is you can go to the hourly chart, and you can see we've tested just shy of the trend line, and we've got a, you know, a, a a reversal here but to my mind in terms of you know how i look to to manage my risk i need to see a close back above the near-term vwap so if i can get a close back above the the near-term vwap this is the daily vwap up at 108.34 so if i'm going to close above that then what i would look to do um, would be looking at a long position risking the, the swing low and a few pips below it initially looking to target into the into the daily VWAP, we've got the daily pivot here. So I'm at now, this is 1.5 risk return. But like I said, what I'm ultimately looking for is a re, you know, we've got that, there's 109 options. We've got the range highs here. So again, thinking in terms of range at the moment, by the time we get up into those range highs, if this is my play, then I've got uh, three times risk reward. Does that make sense, Anthony? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, if there are any more questions, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I hope it was useful. Keep an eye on these, uh, these key trend lines and, uh, and I'll join you all again next week. And like I say, if you want to join me this evening, uh, there's a webinar, I put the link in the chat uh, where I will go into a bit more detail about the Trade Pro program. Thanks very much for your time and I hope you found this helpful.